need somebody Help Not just anybody Help You know I need someone We had a sequence in Help <clears throat> where they go into a drama coach's studio. I got a call from my agent to go and see Richard Lester about a movie. And when I got there to the studios at Twickenham and the Beatles were there, I've, oh, I was just so excited, I couldn't believe it. By the time I got home, my agent had rung my mother and said, oh, Wendy's got the part in the movie and they'll be biking over call sheets and scripts and all that sort of thing. So, very exciting time because you're just sort of setting out in the business, you know, and it was one of the first jobs you've ever had. It was brilliant. One of the people that I've admired and watched over the years was Frankie Howard. And I thought that he and the boys would get on and they both liked each other's work. My role in this epic was to play a drama student at the Sam Ahab Drama School, which of course Sam Ahab is Bahamas spelt backwards. My character was, was called um, Lady Macbeth and uh, supposed to be uh, rehearsing my role in whatever it was Sam Ahab was going to produce. And then they just all sort of appeared. And then of course the baddies turn up and they're trying to get this ring off Ringo's hand and decide that they'll, the only way to get the ring is to uh, cut his hand off which is uh, it's all good family entertainment, this. And uh, anyway, there's a throwing of an axe and it, it sticks into a mirror. And John takes the axe out of the wall and he goes across to Lady Macbeth and uh, with full apologies to the bard, he says, is this a chopper you see before you? Frankie, like a lot of comedians, was actually quite a serious man. And his timing was absolutely perfect and of course to the boys this I didn't know what timing was we started to film the sequence and it was painfully obvious right from the beginning that their two styles of working didn't gel that Frankie was nervous with them and they were nervous with Frankie um, more the former than the latter it was all just fun all the time you know as I say it was all impromptu, you know, they used to sort of have a bit of a script to say, but then they'd all alter it all and just laugh or, you know, do it all their way, really. I think the thing is, with, with Richard Lester, I think he realised he just had to go with the flow, because you, I don't think you could have controlled those boys at all. I would have hated to have been the director, because you don't want to shout at them or cause any unpleasantness, but you'd, I think probably you need a, a lion's whip or something to keep them in line. I would not say that the Beatles were extraordinarily adept at remembering the lines. There, have, there were times where one, I would have to say their lines to them and they would say them back. And Frankie Howard couldn't deal with that and was in fact very rude to them. <laughs> the whole thing seemed so disjointed and you wondered how on earth any of this would cut together and, and be a part of any movie. And the sequence just painfully didn't fly, it didn't come off. Unfortunately, I wasn't told that my scene had been cut and it was the premiere and everything and I couldn't understand why I hadn't been invited. And that's when I found out then that the scene had been cut. I mean, absolutely mortified. It was such a cruel thing to do to a young girl. I think, you know, to, to look back at those pictures and everything, it, it was... I'm so pleased that they were sent to me because um, it did bring back uh, memories of a happy few days. It was smashing. <laughs>